Hello, welcome to the SharePoint PM page short video. And in this video, we'll have a look on how you can deploy your SharePoint framework web pods or other components at tenant wide uh, based on new settings which are available in a SharePoint framework solution. So let's actually jump right into it. So I'm going to use the Windows PowerShell uh, this time as my console application and let's actually execute uh, the Yo Microsoft SharePoint. So we actually start the scaffolding process uh, using the Yeoman templates. And now as long as you're running the latest version uh, of the Microsoft SharePoint framework solution Yeoman templates, there's some new option uh, available as we go through this flow. So let's use the tenant deploy as the solution name. Um, so let's actually uh, present that there. We're going to use the current folder. And this is the new solution uh, or option uh, which is available uh, with the latest version of SharePoint framework uh, templates. So do you want to allow the tenant admin the choice of being able to deploy the solution to all sites immediately without running any feature deployment or adding apps in the sites? And the whole point is that if you set this setting, yes, it's going to actually set the default setting in the solution package JSON file accordingly, and then the tenant administrator can control is that solution you're going to be deployed tenant wide. In this case, I'm going to intentionally say no, and we're going to update that manually whenever the scaffolding has been completed, so you can see the setting in practice. We're going to create a web part, and let's call this uh, tenant uh, wide uh, tenant wide uh, deploy a web part, so we can find it in the web part uh, picker in the in the sites, and let's use the default description and no JavaScript framework. Now. From this moment on, this can take a while, so a few minutes, or depending on a machine. Uh, so let's actually speed up the video until the scaffolding is completed. So now the scaffolding is completed, and we can have a look on the solution if we start, start up the Visual Studio Code. And let me move uh, the Visual Studio Code on the right window. So this is obviously just the default uh, SharePoint Framework solution structure. But the key change is with the latest version of SharePoint Framework uh, Human Templates uh, packages, and the templates themselves uh, is a new option in the package solution JSON. And you actually saw me answer false or no to that question. So the skip feature deployment is set to be false. And if you uh, hover in here, you actually get additional details on the settings as well. Now, in our case, we want to demonstrate and the web part to be immediately available across the tenant, across all of the sites within a tenant. So we're going to actually set uh, the setting to be true. So skip feature deployment and that really uh, refers to the feature framework elements which might be in the solution and that's a really important thing to realize. So these solutions or web parts which are immediately available or the solution which are configured and uh, this setting to be true, we do not apply any feature framework elements from those solutions uh, as part of the deployment because these solutions are not actually available if you go add an app, add an app functionality in the site contents page. These solutions configured with the setting are automatically deployed across the tenant and the web part or the extensions are automatically available within the site. For web parts, the functionality is available immediately in the web part picker, as you can see the web part uh, from there. For extensions, you still need to associate the client side component ID, for example, to field or use a custom action. But you don't explicitly need to install the solution to the site to be able to get the functionality to work. So let's see this one in practice. So I'm going to move back on my console application and let's do a call bundle. So we can actually uh, package the solution. And since that setting is true, we can quickly have a look on what it actually means within our solution package. Um, so there we go, the bundling. And let's also do uh, package solution command, uh, which will then prepare the SP, K, 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 SPPKG package uh, for us. Uh, in this case, tenant deploy SPPKG package, which we can then deploy. Uh, you can actually see the files or the, the structure uh, inside of the SPPKG package if you go down to the debug folder and have a look on, in this case, the app manifest. So we have a new setting here in the app manifest, um, which is actually skip feature deployment true. So the JSON file actually controls this creation, which you don't, you can't actually modify this file directly from here, but this uh, is here as a reference, so you can actually understand what's getting packaged on the SPPKG file. So okay, so now we have the solution available. So let me open up an explorer. 
so we can actually get it copied to our test tenant. So I'm going to go in the SharePoint folder, solution folder, and there's our tenant uh, deploy SPP KG file. And we want to actually get that one deployed within a tenant. So here we go. Uh, here's our uh, test tenant for this particular demo. And if I, uh, if we actually use or track and drop that file in, and here we go, we actually get it deployed to the site. And now this is a crucial moment uh, where the tenant administrator or the person who has been delegated permission to approve uh, these add-ins has to then uh, checkbox uh, or check this uh, checkbox uh, in the deployment. So if the setting is true in the package solution JSON, this option will be available, but still the tenant administrator has to approve those web parts to be automatically across all of the sites within this tenant. And by checking the checkbox and clicking deploy, that means that that solution, is it, if it contains extensions or web parts, will be immediately automatically available across the tenants when people are using uh, the web parts or the functionalities within the site. And let's have a look on that one. Here's an out-of-the-box theme site. Uh, let's create a new page uh, in the theme site. And we're going to create a modern page. Uh, whoop, uh, let's actually get in here. That was actually a classic page. Uh, let's get in here uh, and create a new page. There we go. Oh, let's go to the site pages uh, folder. So double checking that we're creating the right format uh, of the page. Uh, or here we go and I can click from here. Uh, the functionality obviously works across the, the modern and the classic sites, but I can create a wiki page, web part page or site page. And if I create a site page, uh, that's actually the modern experiences. So here we go. And I can actually go to the web part picker and I can see our custom tenant uh, wide deploy web part to be available uh, in the picker, even though I haven't explicitly installed anything on the site. And that's because of all of this, this setting in the package solution and also to tenant administrator by checking the checkbox. Obviously, the same thing applies to the uh, modern uh, modern groups or modern team sites or whatever we want to call this, the, the group sites. Uh, so let's create a new page. And in here, if we create a new page, uh, we can actually see the web part uh, to be immediately available uh, from the uh, web part picker. And like mentioned, uh, extensions are slightly different case because for extensions, we do not have a UI to make them visible or to be selected in the, in the site or site collection level. So for extensions, you still need to apply the client side component ID, for example, for user custom action or for the field, uh, field in a list or field in a, in a site uh, collection level. But you do not have to explicitly deploy the solution packets to every single site collection or every single site. And that's it. That's all we're going to do in this video. Hopefully you'll find the capability useful and please give us feedback. Please keep on uh, sending us feedback and providing input uh, for your requirements around SharePoint framework. Thank you.